Hi Buns, you love my last macro video and all of you voted that you'd like to see even more quality of life macros. So I scoured the internet, deep dived into Reddit and other various websites to find and design the best thick macros for you. Make sure to limit break three that like button to give me good pets on my hard work. There are timestamps below so you can reference this video in the future. Number one, the menu macro. This is by far the most underrated macro to create a drop down or alternate macro menu to keep your UI as clean as possible. This is the way I achieved this for my PC playing. You'll start by making sure that we have hotbars 7 to 10 shared. Now, of course, you can use any hotbars. I just like to work backwards. This means no matter what job you're on, this hotbars will be shared between all of them. After that, we'll be making our first macro. I will be using HUD layout 4 as our menu. Using the crystal icon, just my personal preference, and simply typing forward slash HUD layout 4. Now this means when you press this, it will change you to HUD layout 4. Now we want to go back macro, which I use the back arrow as the icon and forward slash HUD layout 1. We will use hotbar 10 as our main little menu to get to the big menu. So I will put this on HUD layout 1 and I like to tuck it right in the corner out of the way of everything since you all know I really love a clean UI. I will drop the menu macro with the crystal icon right here. Now I will drop the go back macro. Now let's go to HUD layout 4 and design our menu layout. This is really customizable. I'm just going to give you a simple layout though to get started. I will put hotbars 7, 8, and 9 very big in the middle. I increase these to 140% because I'm blind AF without my glasses and I put them right in the middle of the screen. I will put the go back macro on any one of these hotbars here. And now you can really just put whatever you want. I like to put a lot of my job icons here so I can easily switch around in game, put some other quality of life macros for Island Sanctuary, or maybe my shiny weapon macro that allows you to keep your shiny weapon shining even when moving or sheath. This one I shared in my previous macro video. I would love to see what you all come up with on the menu macro, so make sure to join my Discord and share your images in there and tag me. Number two, speaking of different HUD layouts, this is a little bit more advanced for people who play multiple roles, but I haven't really seen anyone talk about this. I created a macro for different UIs depending on the role I'm playing. My UI tends to look a tad bit different depending on if I'm playing a tank, healer, or DPS. The macro for each would be for my main HUD layout 1, which is DPS, HUD layout 2, which would be healer, and HUD layout 3, which would be tank. There is a little bit more in detail about it, but when I'm a tank, I generally like my enemy list to be bigger and move to where I can see it and make sure I have complete aggro over every enemy and to make sure the map is a lot bigger since I'm leading the party. For healers, I like to have my party list bigger and closer to the middle so I can keep check on all the party HP while also making the map smaller and the enemy list smaller. DPS, I like to have all my conditional buffs and debuffs bigger so then I can keep track of where I'm at on my rotation for jobs, especially for jobs like Monk, because sometimes I zone out halfway through. This is even a more advanced pro tip if you want to be a really cool kid, and instead of having the macro to switch HUD layout, you can simply include the switch of HUD layouts in the job change macro itself so you can even simplify it more. This would look something like this forward slash mycon one gear set. This means I'll be using the icon of gear set one, which is my paladin. You can find the gear set number under the character menu and going to gear set list. You can see that my paladin is number one. The next line is forward slash gs change one, which means gear set change one. This means my character will change to gear set one. The next line is hud layout three, which is my tanking hud layout. You will need a forward slash weight one if you're doing a battle stance once changed or any type of other emo, but it isn't necessary. It just adds a little bit of flair. I honestly didn't think having different HUD layouts would make that big of a difference, but someone who plays every role and has every role to 90, I now see the importance of having different aspects of the UI bigger and smaller, and I don't want to have to change them every time. So I want to believe that this is why they gave us multiple HUD layouts. Number three. Now this is an absolute personal favorite and honestly one of my most used when doing roulettes and that's just a simple voice mute macro. No, no, no. Shush. Stop talking. For the life of me, I cannot stand re-listening to dungeon voices over and over again on my EU character when unlocking everything. So a simple forward slash voice will mute the voices and you simply click it again to unmute. It does not put the voice volume to zero, it simply mutes it so it will go back to whatever level it was when you unmute it. Then I can just listen to the epic background music instead. Dead ends, I'm totally looking at you. 
Number four, the next one inspired for in-game timers of regular things. I really like gathering ether sands with miners and botanists, and I know not a lot of people use these in-game timers. And if you do happen to use these, comment down below what you use them for, because I don't run into many people who do. The reason I use these is sometimes I just want to gather specific items without having to use an out-of-game website. So I dug deep into Reddit and found this post which showed how they did it for collectibles, which is a great idea. I simplified it just for ether sands, since I always need a ton of these for current endgame crafting and gathering. You can also include any gathering nodes on timers that you may want to be notified of. I would just copy this exactly as I still have yet to figure out what the RP stands for in this macro, but I didn't create it, this person did, so I don't question it. If any of you know, just put it under my pinned comment in the comment section so other people can find out as well. Looking at this macro, the first is forward slash alarm quotations, the name of the alarm, and then you have ET, which stands for Aorzea time. RP, which again, I'm not sure what that means, and then the time in military time. So for the ether sands, that would be 0, 0800 hours. And then the very last number, which is a three or one or two, that's just the amount of time that you want to be notified in your IRL time of when this alarm goes off. And a big thank you to the creator of this macro because you're the only post that I've been able to find talking about this. Speaking of gathering, I'm not sure if people use this for gathering, but I find it immensely helpful. And that is number five, my gathering collectible macro. And since it's really the only gathering macro out there, then I feel like this is a good place to include it. It's just essentially the end game partial rotation for collectibles. The rotation is simply scrutiny, meticulous prospector, scrutiny, meticulous prospector. And now it's just the one click macro. When using this macro, it just simplifies when gathering collectibles. You must have 400 GP and usually when you start getting 400 collectability per meticulous prospector hit, you know that you're ready to use this macro reliably. I am using it on ether sands that sell really well and I just need a ton. You can get these by fishing, but I like to just get them when the timer pops up and then continue whatever I'm doing in game. I just find it more efficient. As shown, we have the macro just with these four abilities because there's always kind of a different result depending on your luck of when using the macro. Sometimes I find that the collectible is done with just this macro, but most of the time I need to use one or two other abilities before I start collecting, but it is determined by how lucky I was during the gathering. Now I really hope you enjoyed these five macros that I use really often in game. And if you wanna see more macros, then you can find my previous videos that I had posted along with huge libraries of other things that I make Final Fantasy guides and tutorials on. Now, I really wanna expand out from quality of life macros to maybe tank, healer, or DPS macros. So leave a comment down below which macros you would like to see next. I want to give a gigantic thank you to my Patreons and YouTube member supporters as if it wasn't for you guys I wouldn't be able to put out regular content like this. And if you want to watch more Final Fantasy guides and tutorials then you can click here.